what kind of indications could you use exosomes for? Any inflammatory disease you can think about, which is almost all of them. There, this will be useful in cancer in the future, uh, slightly modified. Um, it would not be responsible to just inject somebody with cancer with exosomes. But there are certain cancers that can be therapeutically targeted with exosomes. Those are, say, colon cancers, pancreatic cancers, that type of thing, not a breast cancer. Uh, Sjogren's disease, uh, auto, auto arthritis is, is a really good one. Uh, we, we have preliminary data that shows that you can regenerate cart cartilage as long as you have an appropriate matrix for these exosomes. You can't just inject them on their own in saline. They have to be part of a fiber network such that the cells can migrate into them. Obviously, all the aesthetics, like I said, hair regrowth. Alopecia areata is showing a lot of rapid results. If, if I wanted to get started with exosomes, I mean, I just buy exosomes. No, we don't sell them directly to the public because we, they are, a, they are potent, you know, mm -hmm. and there is the danger that, okay, here's an example. Everybody's has COVID. I have an, an FDA application for post COVID treatment. If you find out you have COVID and you're in your third or fourth day and you think, oh, to the exosomes, grab the exosomes, you could kill yourself. I mean, they are anti-inflammatory. It's dangerous. Um, so I don't want that responsibility. I don't want it going down that route. Generally, if a physician is going to treat somebody, they call me and they ask, and I have to sort of explain that to them. You can think of... Um, an elderly woman who you overdose, so she, so you make her, you cause her to be immunocompromised, and then she gets COVID. You know, so that kind of thing is very stressful to me. So, yeah, you, right. You you want a physician to ensure that you're healthy, and it's the right time to to be able to apply these. It's just some someone else. It's the same as um, physicians aren't allowed to prescribe to themselves, right? I mean, and that's the reason. You know, somebody, a third party needs to have a clear thought process as to why this should be applied. That um, exosomes are often compared to stem cells. And we, we kind of talked about stem cells as well. But stem cells would continue to generate, right? So one, one of the things with exosomes is, is I inject the exosomes and, and after some period of time, they, they will be gone, right? Because there's nothing generating them. But if, if I could get stem cells and I could get them to... Um, to grow, then they would hopefully continue to produce uh, exosomes within me. Will that not work? Okay, well, that's a good question. Um, I don't think stem cells have ever been shown to grow inside of you. You could talk about persistence. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> a third-party stem cell, so let's say we want a young stem cell. So you could take your own stem cell and re-inject it into yourself, like say into the skin around your neck, <clears throat> and that might persist for six months. If you took that stem cell and put it into your blood, it may end up in the lungs and stay there for a week. If you took my stem cell and put it into your blood, it would be gone in four hours. So I can't give you a young placental stem cell and have it persist or grow or anything like that, because it'll be rejected right away. So the exosomes have a two-pronged safety net there. First of all, you get your effect. The RNA persists for as long as possible, but there's no DNA in them. And you should be a little wary of taking another cell that could have HIV or something in its DNA. And then that DNA cross recombines with yours and then you end up with HIV, you know? So that's a major part of the safety profile. The, the cells are carrying DNA and the exosomes are not. It's just like, again, a Moderna vaccine that you have nucleic acids and protein. And the, so exosomes do not get rejected because th they don't have any protein on their outer shell or- Right, they don't have the HLA that you're talking about. Okay, so they're just these little balls of, but the- of <laughs> that with with the messenger RNA in. And where do you see the future of exosomes? I mean, you've been working with exosomes for many years now. 
Um, where do you say, because they, they seem like really exciting. And especially if, <clears throat> if they're one of the reasons why we see such effect of, of young blood, right? This systemic ability to regenerate the body. Where do you see like the next steps with exosomes? Well, you know, since you brought that up, obviously I've been excited about the young blood for quite a while. I mean, I do have a forever exosome that I want to work on, which would, you know, rewind your aging by three days and then you stop and go forward two days and then go back three days and so it's like that. Um, that's my ultimate goal. But for right now, what we need to do is get something approved. So to get something approved, the FDA has to start understanding what characterization is, right? And they still look at it as a cellular therapy. I mean, I've been asked to do all of this cellular characterization work when I'm not using the cells. You know? So that kind of thing will, will change over time. Um, they even said, well, why don't you use the number of particles as a release criteria? Well, that has, again, I explained to you that doesn't really mean anything, right? So I'm, I'm, we don't have any exosomes in phase three trials yet. That's when things start to get serious. Right now, people are being approved for phase two. Uh, they don't have to provide a lot of information to the FDA. Once you get to phase three, the FDA really starts going through what you're doing with a five tooth comb. And that's where we're gonna start to separate sort of the, uh, I was gonna say the men from the boys, but we are past that time in our history. <laughs> so we'll say the pros from the, uh, the non-pros. Mm -hmm. Are you, is Chimera involved with uh, clinical trials, like level two clinical trials, phase two? Yeah, we, we have to decide where we're going to do this trial. Um, there's the Native American population. There is, you can, you can do uh, studies in, in foreign countries, but the FDA has to go inspect that program before you do it. Uh, so we're probably going to start this in Puerto Rico for the COVID treatments. Um, but, you know, it has to be a pop. Remember, we're doing post-COVID now. We're not doing acute COVID. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of post-COVID patients everywhere at this point. So after using exosomes on someone or some or an animal, have you ever looked at like measures of aging for that organism, yes, like right. Horvath right. clock or something like that? Right. So we've exactly done that Horvath clock. Um, which I love his clock. He even has a clock for rodents and other kinds of mammals and such. And he's working with Jeff Bezos now. Um, I have had physicians that have treated 25 patients with that pre and post whole breath clock and tell me that 98% of the patients are younger ver according to that clock. Um, so when we're now implementing, we just got our, our DNA sequencer we're going to start doing that epigenetic sequencing ourselves in our own lab um, in order to continue characterizing in that fashion. Um, so I'm very excited about that. We just got trained on it last Thursday. Yeah, really interesting. If you can show the reversal of aging with this. Yeah. And, and we, we got to sequence also for diagnostic purposes, such as cancer, et cetera. But it's still a $500,000 piece of equipment. A, and then you have to have people to know how to use it, being multiple people. So it's it's one of the better things that's happened to my lab in the last few years. Very exciting. Excellent. So, uh, so if people wanted to find out more about your current work and uh, Chimera Labs, where would they go? Well, the site is chimeralabs.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can also visit exosomes.com if you're looking for information on exosomes. Um, that's a purely educational site. Um, so, uh, Dr. Ross, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, Richard.